Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Thousand Year Teamer, a blue, red and green combo deck built around the 6-man enchantment, Thousand Year Storm, which says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell you've cast before it this turn, and then you also get to choose new targets for those copies. So the goal of the deck is to try and ramp into a Thousand Year Storm as soon as possible, and then let sweet things happen by chaining together a bunch of cheap instants and sorceries, followed by maybe some more expensive instants and sorceries to win the game. So let's go over the entire deck list here, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got 4 copies of Opt, 1 mana for an instant that lets us cry 1 and draw a card, so very useful in the early game to sculpt our hand as we're looking for those early ramp spells to get us ahead of mana. And then in the late game it combines very nicely with Thousand Year Storm. Just being a one mana instant means that it's very cheap to start copying all future spells that we're going to play in that turn. So just a great enabler once we do have the Thousand Year Storm in play. Then we also have four copies of Charter Course, two mana to draw two and then discard a card. Don't have any creatures that will be attacking so the... Uh, other part of the card is not too relevant, but just being able to draw to and discard is perfectly fine in this deck, helps us sculpt our hand early, and then in the late game another cheap enabler for Thousand Year Storm, and there's plenty of cards in the late game that we're not gonna need, like additional ramp spells or maybe lands, when we already have enough mana. Then we also have two copies of Search for Ascanta, a nice card selection engine in the early game as it's an enchantment, and then it will transform into Ascanta, the Sunken Ruin, which is a great way to get ahead on cards, and the fact that we're also ramping means we'll have plenty of mana to activate Ascanta and still cast the uh, things we can find with it. So just a great card for the deck. Then we get to some of the removal spells in the deck. We've got two copies of Lava Coil as a sorcery that can deal 4 damage to a creature, and if that creature would die it gets exiled instead. So a great way to deal with recursive threats, like the various Phoenix cards, but also just a very efficient removal spell dealing 4 damage for 2 mana. Then we also have 4 copies of Lightning Strike, which is 2 mana to deal 3 damage to any target, so it can also be redirected to Planeswalkers, and also acts as one of our finishers in the late game. Once we chain together a bunch of cheap instants and sorceries, Lightning Strike, combined with Thousand Year Storm, can deal a ton of damage out of nowhere. So this is often how we win the game once we do have a Thousand Year Storm in play, and have cast a bunch of spells in the same turn. Then we get to one of our ramp spells, we've got 4 copies of Grow from the Ashes, 3 mana for a sorcery that lets us search our library for a basic land card to put on the battlefield untapped, and then we have to shuffle our library, and then if we paid the 2 additional generic mana for the kicker ability, then we get to search our library for 2 basic lands instead and put those on the battlefield untapped, which is very useful because then we can still use those 2 lands to potentially cast another spell in the same turn, which is also very useful once we're going off with Thousand Year Storm, since that will let us chain together even more instances and sorceries for an even greater effect. Then we have some more card draw in the form of Chemister's Insight for mana to draw to, also as jumpstart so we can discard one of the less useful cards in the late game like additional ramp spells or lands that we might not need to uh, draw two more cards, and also great to go alongside Thousand Year Storm to draw a bunch of cards. Then we've got a more ramp in the form of Circuitous Root, which is a 4 mana sorcery that lets us search our library for up to 2 basic land cards and or gate cards, and then we can put those on the battlefield tapped. So another great way to get to 6-7 mana on turn 5 consistently, and this is also the reason why we're playing 2 gates as you'll see in a second. Then at 5 mana we've got 2 copies of Raal, which is also great especially if we can ramp into it on turn 4 after playing a Grow from the Ashes on turn 3 can provide a bit of card advantage with the plus one ability, the minus three can take out even very large creatures as we have plenty of instants and sorceries going to the graveyard, and then the minus eight ability can also be a way to close out the game, although if we get to the late game it might come up where our library is too small, where the minus eight would actually end up decking ourselves before we can kill the opponent, but uh, usually if you're in that spot you can find another way to win the game with Thousand Year Storm and a bunch of Lightning Strikes. Then we've got our three copies of Thousand Year Storm, which is our build around card. Four copies might be a little bit overkill, we do have quite a bit of card selection, so we can still find our Thousand Year Storm when we need it, and it's not really necessary to have more than one copy in play, since one copy is usually enough to win the game. Then we get to our sweet 7 mana spells, we've got 2 copies of Nexus of Fate, which is an instant that lets us take an extra turn, and then we get to shuffle Nexus of Fate back into our library so we can potentially draw it again. So of course the dream is to play a Thousand Year Storm, and then on the following turn cast some cheap instants and sorceries, followed by a Nexus of Fate to take a whole bunch of extra turns right away, which will likely result in us being able to draw Nexus of Fate yet again, which will potentially give us an infinite amount of turns, and then it's not too difficult to find a way to win the game. 
And then we also have two copies of Star of Extinction, which is a 7 mana sorcery that destroys target land, and then Star of Extinction deals 20 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. So this will wipe the entire board. A little bit of a nombo if we have a Rawl in place, so just have to be careful if uh, that's the case. But Star of Extinction is a great way to catch back up after we've ramped, can potentially cast a Star of Extinction on turn 5 to deal with the entire board. And then uh, once we have a clean board and a Thousand Year Storm in play, it's not too difficult to find a way to win the game. And of course, being able to copy Star of Extinction multiple times will result in us being able to destroy multiple lands from the opponent, which can also sand them back quite a bit. And then last but not least, we've got one copy of Expansion Explosion. The Expansion side can be used to copy an instant or sorcery spell with Convert Mana cost 4 or less. So sadly, we can't copy your 7 mana instants and sorceries with it, otherwise it would be a little bit too powerful, but still fine at copying some of our ramp spells or our lightning strikes late in the game. And then the Explosion half could deal X damage to any target, and target player draws X cards, which of course is very powerful considering we've got all these ramp spells accelerating our mana. Then going over the mana base, we do need a whole bunch of basic lands so we can fetch those up with our Grow From The Ashes, which makes building the mana base a little bit tricky, since we need a balance of having enough colors to cast our spells, but also having enough basics to search up with Grow From The Ashes even late in the game, which is also why I've included two copies of Izzet Guildgate, so we can fetch those up with the Root instead, so we still have enough basics for Grow From The Ashes as well. So going over the mana base, we've got four basic islands, two basic mountains, five basic forests, two Izzet guild gates, and then the full force steam vents, which counts as both an island and a mountain, which is useful with our next cards, Rootbound Crag, and Hinterland Harbor, which care about having those basic land types in play to come into play untapped. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and how about this hand? It's only a one-lander, sadly. Um, but we do have double opt to potentially help us find more lands and then if we could get to four mana for the root We're definitely in business So it's a bit of a sketchy keep, but I think I'll keep anyway and of course just keep any lands we can find with opt We are playing a total of 25 lands, so we're pretty likely to find some All right, I'll turn one Leon and Vanguard It's our opponent on the mono white Aggressive deck. Search for Skanta is tempting since it gives us a bit of selection, but we really just need to find lands here. Right, Lava Coil is not land. And that's not a land either, so I'm going to main phase opt here in the hopes of finding a land. That's a land. And then next turn we can maybe use a Lightning Strike or a Lava Coil to deal with the Vanguard and hope to just draw land off the top. Yeah, Johnny Sprite Mates, definitely a lot scarier than the Leonin Vanguard, but they combine pretty well since the Vanguard gains life to uh, trigger the Pride Mate. Alright, we did find the land luckily. So I think I'm just gonna Lightning Strike the Pride Mate and keep the Lava Coil for later. In case they do manage to stick a Pride Mate and put some counters on it, then the Lava Coil can still potentially get rid of a 4 4 Pride Mate. But I wanted to do it main phase just in case they're running some pump spells. You never know. So our opponent appears to be on green-white. Vanguard gets in for one. If we can draw an untap land next turn and cast a root, we'll be in a pretty good spot. And yeah, there we go, perfect. So cast a root, make sure to grab those gates. That's why they're in the deck. And we're not really gonna need double green next turn, so we're fine getting double Izzet guild gate here. And yeah, next turn we could play a Thousand Year Storm. We could potentially ramp some more, we'll see. Opponent is giving us time. Leonin Warleader, not a reason to keep Lava Coil in hand. Otherwise, uh, Warleader could get out of hand. But we do have a Star of Extinction in hand, so we can still clean up all the tokens potentially. So, what do we want to do? I think we just played a Thousand Year Storm, and then next turn we'll see if we want to Star of Extinction or if we want to go root into something else. But by playing the Thousand Year Storm here, we're also committing to playing a Star of Extinction in the near future. Right, Inspiring Unicorn can potentially pump all the tokens they're making right now. So yeah, we might just have to Star of Extinction right now, otherwise we're dead. 
So let's play our lands and then wipe the board and blow up the Sun Petal Grove. Doesn't really matter. Alright, so hopefully we set our opponent back quite a bit here, which will uh, buy us time to chain together some spells with the Thousand Year Storm. Looking for cheap card draw spells here, essentially. Another Leonian War Leader is not bad. Ral's perfect. Alright, so we could go Lava Coil and then Root, which will get doubled, so we'll be able to search up a total of four lands, which gives us a ton of mana to work with. Or we could just Ral, minus on the War Leader, since we have enough instants and sorceries in the graveyard. I kind of like ramping and keeping Ral for now. So we will Lava Coil the War Leader and then Root, giving us a huge mana advantage. And then next turn Ral can help us find more enablers. So let's get some more basics. It can be relevant to leave one of each basic land in the deck when we cast a Growth from the Ashes with Kicker because then of course those lands will come into play untapped and we might be able to use those lands. So if we get rid of all the blue and red lands and we need access to those after casting a Kick Grow, we could be in a bit of trouble. Just something to keep in mind. All right, opponent with an Ajani's Welcome followed by a Pride Mate, which will get a plus one plus one counter right away. That's fine. And a Hasta Marshal which will make Pride Mate up to a 4-4 now. Alright, and another Star of Extinction is not bad here. So I guess we want to cast this before we play Ral, otherwise Ral's gonna die. So let's go for it. Blow up another green source here. And then we can play Ral and plus. And then hopefully find some uh, Instance and sorceries that we can copy. Uh, I think I'll actually go for the Charter Course here. There's a small risk that our opponent has an answer for Ral, but I imagine if they had one of those cards, they would have used it on the Thousand Year Storm already. So yeah, next turn we can plus Ral, Charter Course, and hopefully double some spells. So let's start by plusing. So Nexus of Fate here would seal the deal. Since we would be able to take two extra turns instead of search for us, Kanta's still fine. I think I will still chart a course on the off chance that we find a Nexus of Fate. Since taking two extra turns with a Ral on seven loyalty means we would be able to ultimate Ral, which would win us the game. Alright, just a bunch of lands sadly. So let's discard one. Search Rust Kanta is still great here since it's very likely to find us those spells we're looking for. We'll keep one card in hand for jump start, but I think we can uh, play the other one. So 31 cards remaining, should be plenty to win with the ultimate. And our opponent is going to play another war leader, which we may have to kill with Ral, we'll see. So that's going to the graveyard, we'll transform. And we find an opt. Alright, so lots of decisions here, whether we want to Ascanta first, opt first, Ral. I don't think I want to plus Ral in case we need to minus on the war leader here. So I think I'll start by activating Ascanta. If we find a Nexus of Fate, then the turn is going to be pretty straightforward. Instead of Charter Course. Alright, let's lead with an opt. And Expansion Explosion is not bad. Um. Sure, we'll keep it. So, how much mana are we working with here? If we play our land, we've got access to 10 mana. So if we chart a course, we still have 8. Yeah, I think we chart a course first here. Could have also explosioned on the war leader here. But I'm really looking for a Nexus of Fate here more than anything. Double Lightning Strike could also do it. Discard land. Alright, let's do a quick count here. Yeah, let's discard island. Alright, so... What if... We cast a grow? Don't think we have enough basics left where kicking it would be useful. So let's just cast one normally. And go get a whole bunch of basics here. 
yeah, we've got three basics left, which is perfect. And now we get to Lightning Strike our opponent's face. Copy it with Explosion, or Expansion rather. And then a Lightning Strike our opponent's face again. And uh, I didn't do the math here, but we'll find out if this is enough. Otherwise, we can still minus Ral on the War Leader. And we'll copy lightning, lightning, lightning. And yeah, this should do it. All right, sweet. So just managed to kill the opponent this turn, which also works. Sweet, so a thousand year storm in action. That was nice. On to the next one. All right, we're on a draw and this hand seems okay. Sadly, the crack comes into play tapped because Guildgate is uh, not the same as Steam Vent, so it doesn't count as a mountain for Rootband Crag. But we can still cast an opt on turn two. And we've got all our colors, which is pretty important. All right, Forest means we can now chart a course on turn two if we want to, which I think we do. And now the crack comes into play untapped, thanks to the forest. And our opponent's got a response to our chart, of course. If they're gonna syncopate it for one, that's fine. Syncopate is the kind of card that we don't want the opponent to use on our Nexus of Fate because then it's going to be exiled and not shuffled back in our deck. And a Gutter Snipe. Alright, so that one we can deal with thanks to our Lightning Strike. The question is, do we do it now or do we let them untap and instead play Grow from the Ashes for now? I think I like casting the Grow. We can Grow, get an Island and still cast an Opt. And one turn of Gutter Snipe hopefully doesn't deal too much damage. And then next turn we'll see if we need to pull the trigger on Lightning Strike or if we can keep ramping. Opponent's got their own search for Ascanta, that's fine. So we'll take two from Gutter Snipe. And we want to land. Land lets us play Kick Grow from the Ashes, so I kind of like it. We're working our way up towards Star of Extinction here. So we'll play Kicked Grow. And get Islands and Mountain. And now we could either Char the Course or Lightning Strike the Gutter Snipe, but if we're gonna Star of Extinction soon, then we might be better off uh, holding on to the Lightning Strike. And here we do have Star, which could answer a Flip Toscanta, but our opponent only has one card in Graveyard, so that's not gonna happen anytime soon. So let's just chart a course, look for a thousand year storm here. We'll ditch a land. Alright, so we had a nice early ramp start. Pwn puts negate in their graveyard. And we'll see what they do here, if they tap out or if they keep up counter spells. Alright, Pwn's gonna tap out for a Murmuring Mystic, which conveniently dies to our Star of Extinction here. So, yeah, I think we're just gonna wipe the board and go from there. Blow up the Sulphur Falls, take them off double blue. Now Ascanta is a bit closer to transforming, sadly. But I think we'll be fine. Alright, let's play another Kick Grow from the Ashes into Chemistry's Insight. Opponent's gonna copy it. That's actually pretty good for the opponent here, getting two lands themselves. Alright, it's uh, not what we were hoping for. And let's just play a tap steam vents and then cast uh, Chemistry's Inside end of turn, since their opponents could potentially have a counter up. Yeah, for two mana, our opponent got to search up two lands, which is pretty efficient. And now they have a flip Toscanta and quite a few lands in play. So we could now be in trouble all of a sudden. But if we can find a thousand year storm and resolve it, then we'll be okay. Opponent's gonna use Ascanta to look for a counter spell. And they found a negate. Well, now if we top deck a thousand year storm, we for sure get to resolve it. 
instead of steam vents, so we'll discard the steam vents here to jumpstart. And a Nexus of Fate. Alright, it's not the best Nexus of Fate since we don't have a Flip Toscanta or a Ralzarek in play that's drawing us extra cards. But uh, I'm still gonna cast it here. Give ourselves another shot at finding one of our powerful card draw engines. Eh, let's take another turn. So you can imagine here if we had a Transform Noscanta or a Ral in play, we would be gaining an even bigger advantage every time we take an extra turn. Right now, we're just taking one draw step and a Lava Coil, sadly. Alright, well, I'm just gonna have to say go. And our opponent might now run away with the game thanks to Oscanta. Star of Extinction, I guess we go for it. Blow up Oscanta. Hope they don't have another counterspell. And they're gonna Insight. Interesting. They could have just activated Oscanta instead. And yeah, that's gonna work, so we got rid of Oscanta. Seven mana to destroy land, but still gotta do it. Hope they don't have another Oscanta. Instead, another Gutter Snipe, which we can kill. And a Quasi Duplicate, which... Uh, now we can just Lightning Strike the Gutter Snipe and our opponent doesn't get to copy anything. Usually want to keep our Lightning Strikes in hand to be able to finish off the opponent. Um, but yeah, our opponent kind of forced her hand there. And Ral's an excellent pickup. And I guess we'll take a grow over land. Should still have a few basics left. Alright, well, now our deck is mostly action. Still have three copies of Thousand Year Storm in there. Our Nexus of Fates and Expansion Explosion also works. Let's take the opt. I think we'll cast it now. Alright, just a lightning strike. Let's play our land, say go. And the plan is to explosion at some point for a bunch of mana. Bone cast it inside, discarding a duplicate. So they could potentially jumpstart it. And a Crackling Drake, that's a good target for Lava Coil. And if they try and copy it, instead Electrostatic Field, that's fine. So if they try and copy the Crackling Drake, we can just Explosion it for a bunch. Yeah, that's gonna work out pretty well here. So how much mana are we working with? 4 and then x equals 3, 6, 9. Yeah. And now we don't have to worry about a counterspell. Alright, there's our Thousand Year Storm. So we should be able to go off this turn. Opponent stepped out. So let's start with this, make sure we don't tap all our colors. This seems fine. Alright. So we can plus Ral. Lightning Strike, perfect. Alright, so we should be able to win here. Let's opt. Make sure to keep up as much red mana as possible for the Lightning Strikes. Yeah, we'll take another one. So we could also Nexus of Fate to take extra turns, but it's not going to be necessary here. Opt again. Sure, we'll take an Ascanta. And don't need another Storm. But yeah, Triple Lightning Strike should seal the deal here. Yeah. 
I don't think we need the last one. Alright, sweet. So, managed to win a game against the Blue Red Spells. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we're on a one lander with an opt. So, this one's sketchy, although we do also have a charter course, so any second land lets us charter course. We do have the ramp spell, so we do have most of the cards we're looking for in an opening hand, just maybe a land short. Yeah, I think we'll keep on the draw. And then just try and find some green mana as soon as possible. Alright, perfect. Stake two. Opponent on the red white. Turn to a dent of Vanguard. Vanguard's a very big problem for us since we don't have any clean answers to it. Since uh, they can make it indestructible by paying for life. And all our removal is damage based. So that thing's gonna hit us for three every turn, and we might die before we get to do something sweet here. Alright, we just wanna hit our land drops. Alright, that's good. So, turn three we're gonna grow, turn four we're gonna root, turn five we're gonna play a thousand year storm. So don't think we need the second root. Keep the Nexus as kind of a payoff card until after we play Storm. Healer's Hawk. Alright, so we'll take three. Yeah, we could easily just die to our opponent not doing anything else this game. But we'll see. Let's get a Mountain. Could also play Kick Grow next turn and still be able to cast a Lightning Strike. Opponent with Heroic Reinforcements. Yeah, it's gonna speed up the clock significantly, so we're already down to 5. And yeah, next turn we're just gonna die to their creatures. We can play Kick Grow, still Lightning Strike one of their creatures, but we're still gonna be taking exactly 5. So I don't think there's much we can do here. So yeah, had we been able to Lightning Strike the Vanguard early, if it was another creature, then uh, we would have saved ourselves somewhere around 10 damage, which is quite a bit. But Vanguard's very difficult for us to deal with. So yeah, I think we're just uh, dead on board. Might as well. Guess there's a chance our opponent forgets to make their Vanguard indestructible here, but I doubt it. Alright. So not the most eventful game. And a second reinforcement, it's gonna kill us even if uh, they forget to make Vanguard indestructible here. Alright, GG's. Yeah, reinforcements is definitely a good card against us. Anything that applies a ton of pressure early in the game, we're gonna struggle with. So on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and this hand seems okay. Probably just gonna lead with the guild gate for now. Make sure to get those stamp lands out of the way. Now we can potentially cast a lava coil or a landing strike if we draw one. Up against overgrown tomb. So some sort of Golgari deck. Let's just uh, play island say go. Cast an opt end of turn. And it's going to be a Wild Growth Walker turn too, so if we can find a Lightning Strike here, that would be ideal. Don't need a basic Islands. Another Ral instead. Alright. So it could be in a little bit of trouble here if the Walker gets out of hand. Opponent might respect the Counterspell. Next turn we're going to Root, and then we'll play Ral. And it's going to be Seeker Squire, so Walker will grow up to a 2-4. So Lava Coil would still be an answer. Alright, let's just root here. Get those two. I guess we already have a Guild Gate, so we can get one Guild Gate. And we'll get 
and islands. Well, next turn we could play Raal. The problem is, opponent's probably going to play more creatures here, which will pressure Raal. So it's unlikely that we get to play Raal and then untap a Nexus of Fate. But instead, our opponent didn't play anything here. They could still have a Vraskus Contempt at the ready. Maybe they had a Chupacabra in hand that they didn't want to play. So if we play Raal and they don't have a Contempt, and we get to untap a Nexus of Fate with a Raal in play, then we could definitely pull ahead. So let's play a Raal. Only two instances or sorceries in our graveyard, so minus thing doesn't seem great. Alright, not our Nexus. Well, we could just chain together a bunch of extra turns here. Could play a tap Steam Vents. I'm gonna play the Mountain to still represent having some instant speed removal here. And no end of turn Vraska's Contempt, so who knows. If we get to untap here, double Nexus and a Ral, we could just get to an ultimate pretty quickly. So Ral takes three. And our point says go. Alright. So I think we want to cast a Nexus before we plus. If our opponent had a Contempt, I have to imagine they would have used it already. And that way we have a chance of finding the Nexus of Fate again if we plus one or Ral. So not only do we get an extra draw step from our extra turn, but we also get a Ral activation with every extra turn. Let's grab the chart. Play tap Steam Vents. Take our extra turn. Ooh, Serve Extinction could potentially be strong, but of course it would kill our own Ral. So again, let's Nexus of Fate first. Plus Ral. And... I guess we'll take the insights. And we can still chart a course. Could have also cast a grow before playing the Nexus, but it would have been an unkicked grow. Right, let's discard. I guess we don't need to grow anymore at this point. Alright, I think we still plus. And just a land. Alright. No more extra turns for us, that's fine. We've had our fun. So we could blow up the board with Star of Extinction, doesn't seem necessary here. So I'm just going to main phase inside on the off chance that we find a Thousand Year Storm. Right, expansion Explosion is not bad. Could just root here, get even more lands in play. Yeah, it seems fine. Sets up our Expansion Explosion for next turn. Could also copy it, but we don't have a ton of basics left in our deck. So just a normal root seems fine. And then play a tapped steam vent, say go. And now we've got a ton of mana, ton of cards to work with. So don't hit our chances. If we ever find a thousand year storm, we can completely go off. And alright, opponent does have a Vraska. But Star of Extinction can also answer opposing planeswalkers. So that's still fine. Or we could just explosion it for a bunch. Alright, so Ral's gonna take three. Start by plussing. And there's a Thousand Year Storm, alright. Sweet. So we don't want to play our Thousand Year Storm with Vraska in place since Vraska can destroy enchantments. So let's do a quick count here. If we play a Thousand Year Storm... Four, five, six, seven. Then we can still cast a Star of Extinction afterwards. So that's probably worth it. And then next turn we get to untap, hopefully, with a Thousand Year Storm still in play. And we have a backup Rawl. So we're not too sad if he dies here. And we'll target an Overgrown Tomb. Alright, hopefully they don't have another Vraska here. They would also need a land. They could have an Assassin's Trophy to blow up the Thousand Year Storm. And it's going to be a gruesome menagerie, getting back some creatures from the graveyard, but it's just going to be a Wild Growth Walker, so not the most exciting uh, menagerie here. 
Sweet, so we get to start going off. So we don't have many basics left for Grow from the Ashes, but I guess we'll start there. It's essentially a two mana spell since the land comes into play untapped. Grab a mountain. Now we can chart a course, which draws us four cards. We'll tap some green mana here. And then looking for lightning strikes and other juicy cards. Ooh, two more copies of Thousand Year Storm. Hmm, I don't think we'll need all three. We could keep going off by casting the Chemist's Insight, or we could just cast another Thousand Year Storm. Let's keep going with the one we already have. Now that we've cast two spells already, don't want to let that go to waste. Alright, Lava Coil's pretty good too. And a Nexus. We're one mana short of being able to cast a Nexus here, I think. So won't be able to take four extra turns, sadly. Yeah, we didn't find any Lightning Strikes, which is disappointing. I guess we could dig with an opt. We're pretty likely to find a, a lightning strike here. We might also run out of time this turn. Could have kept opt on top, but we're just really looking for Lightning Strikes, there we go. So now we can Lightning Strike and then copy it with Expansion. Okay, what just happened? Hmm. The timer ran out and the game decided to point all the lightning strikes on the stack at our face instead of at the opponent's face. That's unfortunate, otherwise I think we would have had lethal this turn. I think we had enough lightning strikes uh, to get the job done. But yeah, let that be a lesson to you that if you do pick up the deck and you're going off with a thousand year storm, make sure to play those combo turns swiftly, otherwise you might run into a situation like this. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.